Hello. Interesting few days. In fact, interesting maybe couple of weeks since I did the decaf coffee morning. So, let's run the little intro with the Patreon bit and the vape and then we'll get into it. Shit. Morning. I mean, first things first, I'm going to make myself a brew. It's early, it's like 10am. I've been awake since 5 this morning. That is part of the reason, I think, as to why I haven't been feeling great. But let me make a brew and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of all this. Basically, on Tuesday, my girlfriend received a message from her work saying that two of her colleagues that she'd been working with had tested positive for COVID-19. They tested positive for the antibody, so it looked like they've had the virus and their immune system kicked in and they were producing the antibodies. So... My girlfriend wasn't at work. She's had six days off because it was her scheduled six days off. She's gone back to work today. I was going to make a big video about it, like I recorded part this morning, talking about like how we we're going to feel. And because she was hoping to get a test today, well, she went to work, we was up at five. She went to work at six this morning and she had a test at half past one this afternoon. It's now two o'clock and she had a results like about 10 minutes ago and they came back negative. And we were kind of hoping, in a weird kind of way, that the test would come back positive because it means then that she's producing antibodies, which means she's had the virus. It's likely that I would have had it. And then we could just carry on, like nothing changes. She would have had to isolate for seven days because that's what the other people that have tested positive for the antibodies have had to do. But it's just interesting, like now, she's got a negative test result but it means she's got to stay at work knowing that people that tested positive were there two days ago. Like, and not everybody's being tested there. They're working their way down through the hierarchy of the place. So, like, the office staff have been tested and the management, and then it came down to, like, the training managers. That's what my girlfriend is. And next it will go to the warehouse workers. So, like, how many of those are going to test positive? Which means, like, it's pretty obvious now because two of my girlfriend's colleagues, training managers, tested positive. People that she was working with before she had her six days off. Like, they have tested positive. So the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, is making its way through the place. So it's kind of, it's a bit of an anticlimax to know that she's negative for it, which means she hasn't experienced the virus, which, mean, which means I haven't, which means I guess we're still on alert. But it's even more dodgy now, knowing that people are in the building that have COVID-19 or have had, and like there's no PPE there, there's no protection. So, I don't know, make of that what you will, but that's like, I was going to talk about that and we were hoping that it would be positive, she would have seven days off and we could just chill, because the people that have tested positive have had no symptoms whatsoever, which is weird. Like, the mystery of COVID-19 continues, and this video will probably get demonetized because I've said those words so many times. But, let's talk about why I stopped doing the decaf coffee morning when I did, and how I've been feeling for the past, like, nine days. So I did the last decaf last Tuesday. I was planning to do it Wednesday and Thursday as well, but I just felt so bad. And I'd been feeling bad for a few days before that. And it was just, it was mainly head pressure. Like just this full feeling in my head, like my ears feel pressure. My nose was bad. I mentioned like it was tender on my forehead, which usually points to sinus issues. And then I've got like a bit of a sore throat. I've been coughing a bit. So like it's all been a bit weird lately. But the head pressure thing has been something that's been bothering me. Like I've had a stiff neck as well and pain. And I keep getting, and still, like, this disorientated feeling when I'm doing things, if I look around, or I've been trying to work for the last, like, three or four days, I've really been working hard for one of my customers, and it's just, 
like every now and again I'll get this disorientated feeling it's it's not nice but one thing that I'm not doing and I don't know what this video is really about I mean it's about head pressure and anxiety but I think the big takeaway for me because I thought to myself when this first started like 10 12 days ago I thought maybe I'll like find this in one of my old videos where I've talked about the feeling of head pressure and maybe there is one out there but I couldn't find it there's nothing that I've titled about head pressure so hence the reason for this video being titled head pressure because as I've said many times like the reason or part of the reason that I make these videos is so I can look back in future and see that I've experienced head pressure, I've experienced dizziness and fatigue and all the other sensations and symptoms that people with anxiety talk about. So, like, this is the head pressure one, Billy. If I ever decide that I want to watch something back because I'm struggling with head pressure, this is that moment. Like, I'm struggling with head pressure. Although it's not too bad today. Yesterday, I decided to take an antihistamine because a lot of people have been talking about how this could be a hay fever thing because people experience dizziness and like head fullness and cotton wool feeling in your head and that feeling of being on a boat like that's a real common symptom just where you feel like you're swaying even when you're sitting that's the experience that I'm getting today more than anything else but I thought yeah maybe hay fever so I took an antihistamine yesterday and yesterday was the best day that I've had in like two weeks. I was playing football in the garden with a dog, like throwing the ball in the air and then picking it up off the ground and turning around and chasing the dog and stuff with no nothing, no disorientation, no dizziness, no nothing. Then I got up this morning, we got up at five, like I say, and my girlfriend went to work for six. I was at home, I started working at like half six, seven, but I took an antihistamine but it's not had the same effect today. But there's a number of reasons that it could be. But this gets me to the point of like the reasons that it could be. It could be a sleep thing. Like maybe I didn't have enough sleep last night, although I was in bed for like nine o'clock, although we did get up at five. Possibly it could be because I'm here on my own. Like my daughter's not here. My girlfriend's not here. It's just me and the dog. Or it could just be that yesterday I just had a good day. And like now I'm back with whatever it is, the hay fever or a sinus issue. But this is the point. The point is, is that I'm not really looking for a reason as to why my head feels this pressure. And I think it's the same with any symptom of anxiety, because when you get hit with a symptom, there's so many different things that trigger different people. For me, it's like dizziness and the head pressure thing and the brain zaps. For other people, it's like a breathing thing or the heart palpitations or, I don't know, nausea. It could be anything. But the problem is, is when those symptoms strike and then you spend so much time trying to eliminate things or avoid things to try and squash that symptom and sensation. And that's maybe what I've been a victim of in the past. Focusing all my attention on, like, what can I do to stop feeling dizzy? What can I do? What can I change? What vitamin can I, can I take? What can I eat? Or what can I do that's going to stop me feeling so dizzy? And that's when you get caught in the cycle, because you start to fear it more. And when they do the things that you do and they don't make any difference, you start to panic. And then you start to get other sensations. And then your mind just switches from symptom to symptom. And that's become an issue for me in the past. Whereas with this head pressure this time, I'm basically just, I acknowledge there is head pressure. It's been there for a couple of weeks. I feel this boat, weird, disorientated feeling today. It's, just, it's there. It's not the first time I've experienced it. And I'm pretty confident that it's not going to be the last. But I'm not looking for things. I'm not looking for reasons. I'm not looking at what I can do to avoid it or what if I can just sit on the sofa and not move. Like, does that mean I'll be able to not feel like I'm on a boat? Like, tough. I don't care whether I do or not. I'm just going to sit at my computer and work like I'm supposed to. I'm going to go into the kitchen, make myself a drink, make myself some lunch. I'm going to pick my girlfriend up from work when she finishes and have a normal evening because I'm not going to give it the attention that it's craving this is all part of my anxiety cycle. My sensations, my reaction to sensations, and the escalation.
of the anxiety because of these sensations. So for me, like I know that I've titled this head pressure and it's kind of a thing for me. It's a bit of a journal entry. This is like, here's head pressure. This is what it feels like. It feels like, I don't know, maybe you've been wearing a hat for too long. That's what it feels like. A tight band around your head. I get neck pain, both sides. It just hurts. Sore throat. My nose is constantly blocked, which has eased slightly since the last two days of antihistamines. But as journal entries go, that's pretty much it. Head pressure. You've had it before. You'll have it again. It didn't kill you. It's not going to kill you this time. And I'm pretty sure it won't next. So the takeaway message for anybody watching this is that like head pressure, dizziness, palpitations, whatever it may be, fatigue, nausea, anything. If it's anxiety related, do not fuel it. Do not look for ways to try and stop it. And do not look for things that you can avoid that are going to ease it because they just play into the hands of the anxiety disorder. Just carry on and eventually it will subside. And that's pretty much it. I've got nothing more to really add today other than, yeah, I intend to do some more podcasts. I've got a few people lined up. I'm looking forward to doing a few. I do feel a bit brighter this afternoon, especially even though I'm still experiencing the boat thing, but, like, you do get used to that. It's not very nice, but hey-ho, on with another day. I don't know if I'll bring the decaf coffee morning back, but I definitely will be doing podcasts. I'm also going to be working on, like, just voiceover videos. I've got one in the pipeline at the moment that I'm thinking of putting on, and it's nice, positive stuff, or information, like, helpful, resourceful stuff. So that's where I'm heading. Again, if you want to check out the Patreon, you can get yourself a Be United wristband by giving a dollar per month. But you don't have to. I know I keep saying about it. But I have to make you aware. Like I see other people that are like, share this video, like this video, subscribe to this, pay for my book, do this, do that. Like I'm not doing any of that. But if you want to offer support, you can. And if you don't, I love you all the same. Let's get on with it. On to the next video, man. Hopefully the head pressure eases and I get off this damn boat. But yeah, for now, we're out. And I'll see you on the next one.